Today, we're here at the U.S. Honda Racing Headquarters at the HPD facility in Santa Clarita, California. We're going to take a look at some of the products HPD has created for their B-Spec race car, specifically a camber bolt and their steel braided brake lines. What you're looking at right here on this tabletop is basically a race car in a box. This is the Honda Fit kit that fits the Honda Fit. And these components are mandated to run the B-Spec series in both the pro and club racing. It comes with a totally complete suspension. Uh, they've worked very closely with Bill Steen to revalve these struts. Uh, it comes with the springs with the right spring weight for this particular car. Adjustable height as well as the, the shock hats, totally ready to go. This also has parts to make the engine breathe a little better. We have a K&N air filter as well as a bolt-on straight line exhaust to get the air out of the engine. We also have a steel braided brake line to help the car slow. And to make it go through the corners a little better, we have some camber bolts to give yourselves a little bit of negative camber to make it go through the corners. So what we're going to do now is actually install the brake lines and the camber bolts in this Honda Fit sitting behind us. Let's get to work. Sounds good. First thing we're going to do as part of our Honda Fit kit for the B-Spec class is add the camber bolts and that's going to help us have proper tire wear and get through the corners a little bit better. But to get to that on the strut, we've got to blast the wheels off first. This little item right here is called the camber bolt and this is what holds the strut to the knuckle of the actual vehicle. What this little bolt does, it allows you to adjust the static setting for the camber. Now camber is basically the alignment of the tire this way or that way. So if the top of the tire is leaning inside, that's called negative camber. If it's leaning outside, that's positive camber. Now adding a little bit of negative camber to the car helps us so as the vehicle goes to the corner and starts, the car starts to roll over, in the middle of the corner you want this thing pretty much flat to the surface so you're using the whole contact patch of the tire. If you have positive camber in a corner, tires like this, you're only getting really a portion of the tire. You're going to have uneven tire wear. You're not going to have the adhesion you want as you go through the corner. So we're going to set this car with as much negative camber as we can get using this bolt so that as we go through the corner and it rolls over a little bit, we get a nice flat surface on the roadway. Okay, you can see there's a lot of grime on this car here. This vehicle is actually a survivor of the NASA 25 Hours of Thunder Hill. In 2010, this vehicle, even though it was a B-Spec car, finished fourth in class, which is pretty amazing. In fact, this car was just a Honda leased vehicle. Came to uh, HPD, they threw on the kit, and it's got the original engine drivetrain and survived the longest endurance race in the world. So, you can see right here, these are the uh, HPD Revalve Bilstein struts, and they attach the knuckle here, and these bolts that hold it on are what we're going to replace with the camber bolts. So we're going to pull this bolt out, and the point of this is essentially because the new bolt that's going in is going to be concentric, we can adjust the angle between the Bilstein HPD strut and the steering knuckle itself. And if we can get the top of this knuckle to be closer to the strut, that gives us the negative camber that we want to help this car handle better through the corners. And it's out. Now you can see the adjustment here. Because you can change this angle between the steering knuckle and the strut, we're going to actually use that concentric bolt to show this all the way in, giving us the negative camber that we want. So the new bolt has concentric part where one portion of the bolt shaft is thicker than the other and we're going to place that to our advantage we can make sure we have the angle right where we want it. Once this bolts in and we adjust the actual angle of the bolt, you can see how this knuckle moves inward and outward. Okay, with the concentric portion of the bolt inside the knuckle, as we adjust where the actual head of the bolt is located, you can see the adjustment between the knuckle and the strut itself. So as I go this direction, it puts the top of the knuckle closer to the strut, giving us negative camber. As I go back this direction, you can see it actually pushing the knuckle outwards, giving us more positive camber. For a race setup, we're looking to get this thing as close as we can to the strut to get the top of that thing over as much as we can, get the best negative camber possible. Once you have the head of the bolt where you want it, then you can just tighten down the other side and you've got it. Now for this kit, you actually come with two bolts. You can do the same thing 
with the bottom bolt to push the bottom part outwards, giving even more negative camber. Now, once this is completely set up, my recommendation is take it to an alignment shop, get it exactly where you want it, and these bolts give you the adjustability for the race setup. Once you get this thing nice and tight, make sure you tighten the upper and lower camber bolts. I would use this, the uh, specifications for torque in the manual, and you are ready to hit the track. Now that that's done, let's go to commercial break and we'll come back and meet up with Daryl to see him put on the HPD brake line. Hey Mario. Hey, what do you got in this thing? Uh, 16 valve, 2.4 liter engine, 200 horsepower. Uh, air conditioning. 32 valve, 3.5 liter engine, 650 horsepower, air conditioning. Honda builds every IndyCar engine. It's our commitment to racing and engineering. The same engineering that goes into the all-new Civic, the official vehicle of the IZOD IndyCar series. What you're looking at right here on this tabletop is basically a race car in a box. So this is the Honda Fit kit that fits the Honda Fit. And these components are mandated to run the B-Spec series in both the pro and club racing. It comes with a totally complete suspension. Uh, they've worked very closely with Bill Steen to revalve these struts. Uh, it comes with the springs with the right spring rate for this particular car. Adjustable height as well as the, the shock hats, totally ready to go. This also has parts to make the engine breathe a little better. We have a K&N air filter as well as a bolt-on straight line exhaust to get the air out of the engine. We also have a steel braided brake line to help the car slow. And to make it go through the corners a little better, we have some camber bolts to give yourselves a little bit of negative camber to make it go through the corners. So what we're going to do now is actually install the brake lines and the camber bolts in this Honda Fit sitting behind us. Let's get to work. Sounds good. First thing we're going to do as part of our Honda Fit kit for the B-Spec class is add the camber bolts and that's going to help us have proper tire wear and get through the corners a little bit better. But to get to that on the strut, we've got to blast the wheels off first. This little item right here is called the camber bolt and this is what holds the strut to the knuckle of the actual vehicle. What this little bolt does, it allows you to adjust the static setting for the camber. Now camber is basically the alignment of the tire this way or that way. So if the top of the tire is leaning inside, that's called negative camber. If it's leaning outside, that's positive camber. Now adding a little bit of negative camber to the car helps us so as the vehicle goes to the corner and starts, the car starts to roll over, in the middle of the corner you want this thing pretty much flat to the surface so you're using the whole contact patch of the tire. If you have positive camber in a corner, tires like this, you're only getting really a portion of the tire. You're going to have uneven tire wear. You're not going to have the adhesion you want as you go through the corner. So we're going to set this car with as much negative camber as we can get using this bolt so that as we go through the corner and it rolls over a little bit, we get a nice flat surface on the roadway. Okay, you can see there's a lot of grime on this car here. This vehicle is actually a survivor of the NASA 25 Hours of Thunder Hill. In 2010, this vehicle, even though it was a B-Spec car, finished fourth in class, which is pretty amazing. In fact, this car was just a Honda leased vehicle, came to a HPD, they threw on the kit, and it's got the original engine drivetrain and survived the longest endurance race in the world. So you can see right here, these are the uh, HPD revalve Bilstein struts, and they attach the knuckle here, and these bolts that hold it on are what we're going to replace with the camber bolts. So we're going to pull this bolt out. And the point of this is essentially because the new bolt that's going in is going to be concentric, we can adjust the angle between the Bilstein HPD strut and the steering knuckle itself. And if we can get the top of this knuckle to be closer to the strut, that gives us the negative camber that we want to help this car handle better through the corners. And it's out. Now you can see the adjustment here. Because you can change this angle between the steering knuckle and the strut, we're going to actually use that concentric bolt to show this all the way in, giving us the negative camera that we want. So the new bolt has the concentric part, where one portion of the bolt shaft is thicker than the other. And we're going to place that to our advantage, we can make sure we have the angle right where we want it.
Once this bolt's in, and we adjust the actual angle of the bolt, you can see how this knuckle moves inward and outward. Okay, with the concentric portion of the bolt inside the knuckle, as we adjust where the actual head of the bolt is located, you can see the adjustment between the knuckle and the strut itself. So as I go this direction, it puts the top of the knuckle closer to the strut, giving us negative camber. As I go back this direction, you can see it actually pushing the knuckle outwards, giving us more positive camber. For a race setup, we're looking to get this thing as close as we can to the strut to get the top of that thing over as much as we can, get the best negative camber possible. Once you have the head of the bolt where you want it, then you can just tighten down the other side and you've got it. Now for this kit, you actually come with two bolts. You can do the same thing with the bottom bolt to push the bottom part outwards, giving even more negative camber. Now once this is completely set up, my recommendation is take it to an alignment shop, get it exactly where you want it, and these bolts give you the adjustability for the race setup. Once you get this thing nice and tight, make sure you tighten the upper and lower camber bolts. I would use this, the uh, specifications for torque in the manual. And you are ready to hit the track. Now that that's done, let's go to commercial break and we'll come back and meet up with Daryl to see him put on the HPD brake line. There's a reason why, in four years of powering every car in the Indianapolis 500 race, not a single Honda engine has failed. It's not the parts we make them from. It's the part we put in to every Honda. With so much racing going on in the world, you'd have to be a four-headed monster to keep up with it all. Luckily, we have that. Join Peter Keene, Bill Wood, Errol Tucker, and their guest driver analyst each week for an opinionated look at the news coming out of the racing world. Remember, it's GoRacingTV.com for all your racing and video needs. So now that Rob has changed out the camera bolt on here, and we're going to be able to adjust uh, the camera on this car, I'm going to do a, a brake line change. Now, these cars come with rubber brake lines. Most production cars do. Uh, that's just not going to do when it comes to a race application. Uh, after a while, especially when you're doing endurance racing, uh, these rubber lines will heat up and expand, and that'll cause a sponginess in the brake pedal. Uh, so we definitely want to get rid of that sponginess. We want to have a, a firm pedal every time we go down into turn one and uh, make sure that this car is going to stop one time, and as well as have control of the braking uh, modulation and so on and so forth. So um, we're going to switch these out and we use steel braided lines because they're not going to deteriorate. The, the other aspect about rubber lines is that, you know, some of these cars, especially in club racing, they go off-road, you have some off-road excursions. You never know a rock or something nicks that line. Uh, you know, it, it's just more of a hazard. So the steel braided line is going to protect you against that as well. These are the Honda racing lines that go on the fit. And as you see, they're steel braided. They come with a nice plastic coating to keep these lines, you know, uh, nice and, uh, and clean so that uh, they're not exposed to the weather. Uh, then also, they have a heat protection coating that uh, are down near the caliper and the, uh, the rotor. Uh, in a racing application, we'll take the backing plate of the rotor off so that therefore we can cool the rotor down. But what that ends up doing is exposing the brake line to more heat. So this heat coating actually takes care of that and uh, keeps our, our, our brake lines nice and cool so that the brake fluid doesn't boil inside the line. So the first thing I'm gonna do here is uh, get my 14 mil and I'm gonna uh, basically take the line off here from the bottom. You're going to want to have a catch pan so that therefore the fluid will be able to drain down into that. And you're definitely going to want some gloves because you don't want this uh, brake fluid to get on your hands. It's uh, just not good for you. So I'm just going to loosen that up 
hand loosen it. I'm just gonna hang it, let it sit there for a while. And then I'm gonna come over here, grab my 12 mil, and as you can see, the brake line is attached to the, the shock tower itself, strut tower in this car, and uh, we're gonna need a 13 for that. Okay, now that that's free, I'm gonna come up here, grab my 19, and you're, want, you're gonna want a 10 millimeter brake line wrench, a brake line wrench, you know, basically curves around more than a standard wrench, so that therefore you don't strip the brake line. Okay, and you know, these upgrades for steel braided lines are not a bad idea for regular street cars as well. You know, it's just uh, an added protection that you have knowing that, uh, you know, your brakes are, and your brake lines are always gonna be uh, protected from whatever type of mishap that might happen out there on the road. So now that we have the old brake line out, we're going to install our new Honda Racing brake line. Uh, it will come with all the hardware you need. They give you new uh, bolts as well as new um, copper washers and uh, a retention clip. So let's uh, pop it all in. Okay, first thing we're going to do is put in our brake line and attach our retainer clip. There we go. Now remember, as always, you're gonna to wanna to get these started by hand, get a few threads in there, and then you can uh, use your wrench to tighten it up. And as you can see, I've always had problems with these brake lines. Once you get it started, then you're gonna be able to just tighten it all the way down. All right, now that we have the uh, brake line attached to the uh, brake line hose coming from the chassis, now we can install our 12 mil millimeter down at the bottom of the shock tower. And lastly, we connect our brake line down to the caliper. Remember to use the new crush washers. That's gonna be very important. I'm gonna put that through and then feed it into our caliper. I'm gonna snug those down so that the crush washers stop the fluid from coming through. And that's gonna be it. And that's gonna handle this part of the installation. Now, what you're gonna wanna do is actually bleed the lines get the air out through the bleed screw here, and then you're ready to go racing. So that concludes the installation of the brake lines and the camera bolts. Uh, some of us use gloves and... Uh, Someone's got our hands dirty. Yeah, I did it East Coast style. West Coast style. So, so uh, you too can go B-Spec racing by picking up one of these Honda Fit kits. All you have to do is join Honda Racing Line. And make sure you go to GoRacingTV.com to watch more episodes of Club Racer.